think I'm trapped, but they don't suspect my real power. Two great feature-length Spider-Man thrillers. Extra added attraction. Spider-Man meets the Fantastic Four as the chameleon strikes. Turn the page and begin this classic on page one. Spider-Man, freak, public menace. Sure, you've read many stories about many different magazine heroes, but there's never been a story like this one. Because there's never been a hero like Spider-Man. Page two. Our scene is the bedroom of Peter Parker, the teenage student whom many consider to be a shy bookworm. But oh, if they only knew. Uncle Ben is dead. And all because I was too late to save him. My Spider-Man costume. I wish there were no such thing. It all started when I was bitten by a radioactive spider. Ouch! And I found myself possessed of a spider's powers. So I designed a costume to go into show business and cash in. But while I was busy showing off, an armed burglar fired one fatal shot at Uncle Ben when he was surprised robbing our house. As soon as I learned what had happened, I sped through the city via my spider's web, lusting for vengeance. He won't escape Spider-Man. And I soon caught the killer and turned him over to the police. Got you. You, you ain't human. And now Uncle Ben is gone, and Aunt May and I are alone. And what's worse... Without Uncle Ben, we've no money to pay our bills. Please give me a little more time. I'll pay the rent next week, if you'll only wait. And so? Aunt May, there's only one thing to do. I've got to quit school and get a job. No, Peter, you mustn't. Your uncle always dreamed of you being a scientist someday. You must continue your studies. But I've got to help Aunt May somehow. Wait! With my power as a Spider-Man, I can do anything. I can go anywhere. No one, nothing can stop me. Any amount of money could be mine just for the taking. But no, what am I thinking of? I'm no criminal. I'm not a thief. Besides, if I were ever arrested and imprisoned, it would break Aunt May's heart. No, there's only one other way. I've got to perform again. I've got to bring my Spider-Man act before the public once more. I'll call a booking agent tonight. A few days later, at school... Hey, gang, look. Spider-Man's going to put on a show at the town hall tonight. And the admission's only a dollar. Let's all go. Well, count me out, kids. I can't make it. Well, we might have known he'd rather study. Oh, who needs that walking bookworm anyway? It'd be more fun without him. Page four. That night... As the audience is amazed by Spider-Man's prowess, none suspect the real reason that Peter Parker couldn't be in the audience. I couldn't very well be doing this act and sitting in the audience also. Finally, after the show... It's time to pay you, Spider-Man, but I can't give you cash. Got to give you a check, so there's a record for taxes. What name should I write the check out to? Name? I can't tell you my real name. No one must know my identity. Just make out the check to Spider-Man. Okay, you're the boss. But you'll have a mighty tough time cashing it. A tough time cashing it, eh? Well, we'll just see about that. I'd like to cash this check. I'll uh, have to see some identification. What about my costume? Don't be silly. Anyone can wear a costume. Do you have a social security card or a driver's license in the name of Spider-Man? No, no, I don't. But as Spider-Man finds that he cannot cash his desperately needed check, just across town, a man at a typewriter is making still more trouble for him. When I'm through with this article, Spider-Man will be run out of town. And the next night... 
Might as well go on back where you came from, Spider-Man. There'll be no show tonight, or any night. What? Why? What happened? This happened. Look at this editorial. The paper has everyone so steamed up, they'll probably toss you in jail if you show your face. But why? What have they got against me? What have I done? The headline reads, Spider-Man, menace, but not satisfied with merely writing editorials. J. Jonah Jameson, publisher of the powerful Daily Bugle, delivers lectures all over town. We cannot allow that masked menace to take the law into his own hands. He is a bad influence on our youngsters. Children may try to imitate his fantastic feats. Think what would happen if they make a hero out of this lawless, inhuman monster. We must not permit it. I say that Spider-Man must be outlawed. There is no place for such a dangerous creature in our fair city. The youth of this nation must learn to respect real heroes. Men such as my son, John Jameson, the test pilot. Not selfish freaks such as Spider-Man, a masked menace who refuses to even let us know his true identity. I don't get it. How do other superhuman guys like the Fantastic Four and the Ant-Man get away with it? Nobody bothers them. And they always seem to make enough dough. Ah, I don't even believe that there is a Spider-Man. It's all a publicity stunt. Page six. Well, if I can't make a living as Spider-Man, the only other thing to do is find a part-time job. I'll take a look through the want ads. But again... Peter Parker meets with frustration. Sorry, Sonny. I ain't looking for a school kid. The job I advertised is for a man. But... Extra John Jameson about to orbit Earth in rocket! Say, that looks like... It is. It's Aunt May. I wonder where she's going. Oh, no. She's pawning her jewelry. She must be desperate for money. But she doesn't want me to know. She doesn't want to worry me. For me. She's doing it all for me. And there's no way I can repay her. No way I can help her. I can't even find a job. Extra John Jameson, son of the publisher of the Daily Bugle, about to orbit Earth. Extra. It's all his fault. Because of him, I can't perform in public as a Spider-Man. But I can't give up. I've got to earn some money somehow. I can't let Aunt May down, even if it means the Spider-Man will again stalk the city by night. Spider-Man, part two. Next day, having nothing better to do, Peter Parker finds himself among the spectators, anxiously awaiting the orbit flight of John Jameson. It sure must take a lot of courage to go up in one of those babies. I'll bet even Spider-Man would think twice before volunteering for this ride, huh? I suppose so. Fifteen minutes to blast off. All unauthorized personnel, clear the field. This is it, John. Make your country proud of you, son. As proud as I, your father, am today. I'll do my best, Dad. I promise. Good luck to you, boy. Minutes later, the capsule with John Jameson inside is set in orbit by a perfect launch. Disaster strikes. A small section of the forward guidance package breaks loose from the capsule and falls into space. Without this essential guidance unit, the capsule goes into an erratic orbit, completely out of control. Something's wrong. I can't control her. This flashing red light, it can mean only one thing. I've lost the heart of the guidance device. There's no way to direct the capsule now. Meanwhile, miles away... What is it? What went wrong? Capsule is out of control, sir. Component 243B has broken loose. Condition red. What's that? Without the missing part, he will continue to go into lower and lower orbit until he crashes to Earth. Gentlemen, we haven't much time. We must find some way to save John Jameson's life. 
even though the capsule is doomed. Acting with desperate speed, the space technicians attempt to drop a steel net to catch the capsule, but with no success. A complete miss. We've got to find a better... Suspected by all, a better way does exist in the form of Peter Parker, who has observed the entire dramatic event. There's only one person who can save John Jameson, and that is Spider-Man. I've got to reach the missile control center the fastest way, the way that only Spider-Man can take. Made it, and now... We have a spare 24-3B guidance unit, but there's no way to get it to Jameson in time. You're wrong. There is a way. Spider-Man! Let me have the missing unit. I'll get it to the capsule somehow. Very well. We have nothing to lose. There is no way we can do it. Spider-Man, bah. He's just a publicity-seeking phony. He's trying to grab a headline. What can he do? Instead of flapping your lips, mister, just watch and see what I can do. Wait! H.M. The capsule is getting lower every second. I've got to reach a jet fast. Arriving at a nearby field, Spider-Man's amazing web shoots out, engulfing the guard's gun hand before the sentry can fire. Halt! Identify yourself! No time for that now. Within seconds, the mighty costumed figure has come in as they take to the air. I'll probably be grounded forever for doing this, Spider-Man, but I got a hunch that if anyone can save that poor Joker, you're the guy. Here comes the capsule now. Well, we can never catch it. We don't have to catch it. Wait. What are you going to do? I've got to hitch a ride on that thing as it passes by. This will be my first and last chance. If it doesn't work, here goes. Ring. I hit it. Mustn't let go. Ah, I've got to pull myself up, fighting against all this wind resistance. Even my strength can just barely do it. There, I reached it. But now, the capsule is losing altitude dangerously. Can I attach the missing unit in time? Page 12. Spider-Man, part three. What a lucky break. It fit in place as smooth as silk. And within the capsule. Capsule under manual control again. We'll eject, shoot, and land immediately. He's safe. I did it. Spider-Man succeeded. The capsule is about to land. My boy, he's safe. This is as good a time as any for me to get off. I'll bet I'm the only living person who ever had a ride like that before. I'd better make myself scarce now. He wants to congratulate me and make a big fuss about what I've done. Anyway, from now on, I guess I ain't in public. I'll bet even Mr. Jameson himself would hire me. But when he reads the next edition of the newspaper, Peter Parker is astounded to see... Oh, no. It can't be. It isn't possible. Why? Why? The headline reads, This newspaper demands that Spider-Man be arrested and prosecuted. Editorial by J. Jonah Jameson. Page 14. It was all a plot by Spider-Man to steal the spotlight from my son. I accuse Spider-Man himself of sabotaging the capsule so that the guidance unit would fall off. Spider-Man unlawfully broke into a military base and commandeered a plane by force. Then, by means of a grandstand play, he tried to make a hero of himself. But he caused an important missile test to fail and set our space program back by many weeks. I repeat, Spider-Man is a menace to America. Unfortunately, if something is shouted loud enough, there are always those who will believe it. Fear me more than ever now. Spider-Man ought to be run out of the country. And how? And finally, under pressure of the angry newspaper man's continual barrage. The headline reads, Wanted. Caution. He is dangerous. Report him to the nearest FBI office. Spider-Man.
reward for his capture. Oh, dear. I certainly hope they find that horrible Spider-Man and lock him up before he can do any harm. What do I do now? How can I prove I'm not dangerous? How can I convince people that I wasn't responsible for the failure of that capsule? Everything I do as Spider-Man seems to turn out wrong. What good is my fantastic power if I cannot use it? Or must I be forced to become what they accuse me of being? Must I really become a menace? Perhaps that is the only course left for me. And so, a lonely boy sits and broods with the fate of society at stake. What will his decision be? What will Spider-Man do next? Only time will tell. The end. Turn over the record for the next fantastic adventure from the Marvel Age of Comics. Our mighty action continues on page 15 with Spider-Man versus the Chameleon. How can you defeat a man who can change his identity before you can catch him? Perhaps you don't know the answer, but the Spider-Man was determined to find out, no matter what the cost. Extra bonus extra! In this same amazing tale, you will meet America's most famous, most colorful group of super-adventurers the Fantastic Four. Page 16. We know him as Peter Parker, but the world knows him only as Spider-Man. Say, why didn't I think of it before? There's the way I can make some money, by joining the Fantastic Four. They'll probably jump at the chance to have a teenager with superpowers working with them. It'll be unnatural. Here's their private elevator. But the blame thing isn't working. Uh-oh, I forgot. It can only be operated by one of the four using a special electronic beam. Well, that won't stop Spider-Man. Forcing a couple of locked doors open is mere child's play for... Heck, I didn't figure the elevator would be above me. No room to climb past it. Minutes later, Peter Parker reaches the roof of an adjoining building. Well, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I should have thought of this right away. They'll probably be twice as impressed when they see how easily I get into their private skyscraper headquarters. Here goes nothing. Meanwhile, down below... It's the Spider-Man. What a bonus I'll get for this shot. He's heading for the Fantastic Four's headquarters. He balances himself on that strand of web like a human spider. At that moment, an alarm rings in the ready room of the Fantastic Four. The alarm. Someone is trying to sneak in. He must be some kind of nut to think he can take us by surprise. There's his picture on our viewplate. It's Spider-Man. Why didn't he phone for an appointment like anyone else? Because he's a teenage cornball show-off. Just like the torch. How obliging of them to leave a window open for me. This is a breeze. Activate defense measure B just to be safe. Greetings, group. You shouldn't make it so easy for people to drop in on you. Bad news for you, loudmouth. It ain't that easy. What? A plexiglass cage dropped from the ceiling. This gizmo may keep out the riffraff, gruesome, but it's a joke to me. That device costs us thousands. If you wreck it... Don't worry, rubber face. This squirt's gonna be taught some manners right now. <laughs> You big ape, who do you think you're pushing around? Did you forget you're messing with a guy who has the proportionate strength of a spider? That crying out, that's what I get for pulling my punch on account of his size. Now, hold it, son. We don't want to fight with any strangers. At least not till we know what we're fighting about. Who's fighting? Just consider this a little exhibition. He caught my hand in that net of his. He certainly does live up to his name. Page 18. 
While invisible, I might be able to get this rope over our impetuous young friend. My spider instinct senses danger behind me. Have to move fast. Who tossed that rope? Don't see anyone. Wait! It must be the invisible girl. Well, I'll just give her a whirl for her money. That's it, you animated insect. Fun's over. I'll settle you now. Flame on! He's got me in a circle of flame. Well, I'll just jump over that clown's little trap and keep out of reach until his flame dies down. Then it'll be my turn. Hey, stay still, darn it! Okay, that's it. No more fun and games, fella. Someone might get hurt. I suppose you tell us what you're here for. Get out of the way, Killjoy. Give me another crack at him. It's about time someone asked me. I came here to join up with you. I want to be a member of the Fantastic Four. So I thought I'd give you a demonstration of what I can do. So now let's get down to business. How much does the job pay? I figure I'm worth your top salary. I knew it. That kook has rocks in his head. Afraid you made a mistake, Spider-Man. We're a non-profit organization. We pay no salaries or bonuses. Any profit we make goes into scientific research. You came to the wrong place, pal. This isn't General Motors. We just keep enough money to pay our expenses. Every other cent goes into developing the most effective super crime fighting apparatus we can create. Besides, aren't you wanted by the police? This isn't Outlaws Anonymous. I might have known. You're just like all the rest. Ready to believe the worst of anyone. Okay, keep me out of your group. Who needs you? I'll make you guys look like pikers. Wait, come back. Too bad he left so suddenly. Perhaps we could have helped him. Ah, uh, we've got enough problem kids to worry about now. Somehow, I have a feeling we'll be hearing more from that young man in the future. And now our scene shifts to a defense installation at the edge of town. With my multi-pocket disguise vest, it will be an easy matter for the chameleon to become you, friend janitor. Minutes later. So far, so good. Disguised as the janitor, it was easy to gain access to this restricted area. And now another fast change, and I will take the identity of Professor Newton. Ha! Huh? Nothing can stop the chameleon. With the right disguise, I can steal anything from anywhere, unchallenged. That night, at the chameleon hideout. The Iron Curtain countries will pay a fortune for these plans. Hmm. A TV news bulletin. The entire city is wondering why Spider-Man visited the Fantastic Four today. No comment, says the FF. Rumors are flying all over New York. Unofficial sources claim Spider-Man is being considered for membership in the FF. Nonsense, claims the police commissioner. Hmm. I think Spider-Man's visit is of interest to the chameleon, too. Yes, indeed. Very interesting. The headline reads, Latest on Spider-Man. Grand jury requests immediate probe. The FBI has been alerted for possible action. There is only one reason Spider-Man would want to join the Fantastic Four. Being sought by the police, there is no way for him to earn a legitimate living. He must be desperate for money. And this is where I come in. Spider-Man will make a perfect fall guy for me. When I steal the second half of these missile defense plans, I'll have him put the police off my trail. Page 20. Spider-Man has the powers and instincts of a spider. So I will send him a message that only his spider senses will be able to pick up. Calling Spider-Man. Meet me on roof of Lark Building at 10 tonight. It will be very profitable for you. And miles away, at a neighborhood museum, where Peter Parker is studying the spider exhibit. Someone's trying to contact Spider-Man. I can sense the frequency waves. But who? Well, no 
matter who it is, I can't afford to pass up a chance for profit. I'll just leave my clothes up here, and then... A few minutes before 10 p.m. Almost time for me to take over the elevator night shift. Yes, it is time. But not for you. For the chameleon. After binding and gagging the real elevator operator, the bogus one brazenly takes his place. I'll relieve you now. It's about time. I'm bushed. Then once inside the elevator. So far, my timetable is running right to the split second. Now to change to my Spider-Man guys. And finally... Spider-Man? How, how did you get in? What, what do you want? Those missile defense plans which you're holding. I can't believe it. You... A traitor. Wait. My web will keep you a prisoner until I can escape. This artificial web isn't as strong as Spider-Man's real one, but no one will notice the difference. Seconds later... Help! Police! Spider-Man's heading for the roof with stolen plans! Help! He finally broke free. Good. It's all going according to plan. Here's my ship. I can't fail now. I'll be gone just before the real Spider-Man gets here. I'm sorry I won't be there to hear Spider-Man try to talk himself out of my trap. Strange. That helicopter must have just left the roof I'm heading for. I wonder who sent for me. Nobody is waiting on the roof. Look, there he is. Free, Spider-Man! We want those secret plans you stole. Plans? Stole? I'm beginning to smell a rat. I don't know what this is all about, but nobody's framing me for anything. That'll hold you till I can get away. What a fool I was. The message was a trick to pin a crime on me, and I fell for it. But who could have... Wait, that helicopter... The pilot is the one the police really want. If he hasn't flown too far, I can use my spider senses to tune in on the ship, get its location. Got him. He's out towards the waterfront. I've got to stop him. Page 22. Well, if I'm going to catch me a speeding whirly bird, there's only one way to do it. And that is to get a real fast start. Like this! Quack. He's already reached the sea. But I can make a parachute out of my web and float down to that motorboat below. I'm not licked yet. Minutes later. I'm just in time. There's a plane, and there's a red sub surfacing to meet it. But with my web over the conning tower, they won't be able to open the hatch. Our hatch is jammed. It won't open. How will we get the plans, comrade? Forget the plans. We've been seen. Submerged. Now to find out who framed me. Spider-Man. But how? I can't shake him off, no matter how I maneuver. He, he ripped off the door with his bare hands. End of the line for you, Tommy. Head the ship toward shore. And I mean now. And before the police have left the log building roof. Look! Here's the guy you're looking for. The guy who stole those plans and impersonated me. But in the next split second, the wily chameleon drops a tiny smoke pellet and breaks free in the confusion. Before they know what happened, I'll have taken a new disguise and be free. He can't get out of the building. All exits are guarded. Search every room. Let them search. I knew this disguise would come in handy. Who would ever suspect a policeman? I'll look in here, man. I'll take this corridor. And I'll head for the street under your very noses. But again, the chameleon has reckoned without Spider-Man's supernatural spider's instincts. The tingle I feel. My quarry is close, within striking distance. He's wise to me. If I can just pull this fuse. One of these cops must be a phony. He's doused the lights. But that won't stop me. I can still sense him in the dark. I'll 
I'll just shoot my web over. Oh, no. I'm all out of the special fluid. Page 24. I've got to reach that exit before he does. This is the fastest way. That figure leaving the others. It's him. But as the lights go on again, the chameleon resorts to one last desperate ruse. Help. Grab him. It's the chameleon disguised as Spider-Man again. What? Oh, no, you don't. You're not going to fool us that way a second time. Wait. He's lying. I am Spider-Man. It worked. Now to slip away. In a fit of white-hot fury, the powerful Spider-Man wrenches free of the startled officer's grasp and... Look at him go up that wall. He was the real Spider-Man. Every time I try to help, I get into worse trouble. Well, they can catch that spy themselves now. And within minutes, catch him they do. Here he is, Captain. I spotted him by his torn uniform. I could see his other disguise beneath it. Blast it. I must have ripped it in my scuffle with Spider-Man. And as the chameleon is led away, a lone figure loses himself in the shadows of the silent night. Nothing turns out right. Sub, I wish I had never gotten my superpowers. Later, as the late editions come out, four famous figures ponder the case of the amazing Spider-Man. Reed, he's so powerful and so confused. What if Spider-Man ever turns his superpowers against the law? Yeah. If a teenager can be so blame strong, how strong will he be when he gets older? Ah, uh, we won't ever have to worry about him. Won't we, Johnny? I wonder. The end.